Hi guys, Randall here. Today we're going to talk about Summer Ketone. She's a mace-wielding fire unit. I do think she's mainly oriented for manual play. Uh, for me, she seems fairly lackluster for autoplay, but we'll talk about that in a minute, since there's already been quite a few reviews about her. I'll focus mainly on using her, and I'll browse through her kit fairly quickly. Um, if you are going to spend to get some Viz, there's a good deal going on right now with Amazon Coins, where you get even more Viz for what you spend, so you can look into that. I do have a link myself, otherwise lots of other content creators have some, just make sure you pick a content creator and use their link, uh, because first, you're going to get more value out of what you spend, but it also really helps supporting us and making uh, sure we continue to create content. I know for my side, it really helps just getting better software and hardware without spending money on the channel too much. So there's that. Uh, let's go on with the actual review now. Summer Ketone is a high mobility magic character. She mainly has short range attacks, and then she uh, uses slash and magic, and increases your party's resistance to slashing, which is fairly interesting. I think she's a great counter for ice units and for slash units, uh, so you can thank characters like Oron or Freyavia, she'll especially shine against. Um, she has a move of 3 and jump 1, which might seem low, but she has a ninja sub jump, so she can get to 4 too, and then if she uses nimble movement from her main job, she can actually go to 5 and 3, so she can be a very mobile unit. Uh, she has a little bit of uh, single target resist, a little bit of spirit. So far, no master ability that increases fire units, so uh, we know that's not on the table, unless there's a global, a global exclusive buff, but usually they announce those before, so I would be surprised to see her changed. Then, talking about her TMR, I think it's a really good one. It gives missile resistance and then nullifies silence, charm, and immobilize, so that's really good. But don't pull for her just for that. Uh, it's mainly useful for manual play, where you'll be able to prevent charm before it happens in some matchups. Uh, but everybody got 9s a short while back, and his TMR also nullifies charm, except it casts it around him instead of uh, at a range. But to be honest, you don't need Summer Ketone's TMR, considering 9s can do that, and then the rest is nice, but not completely necessary. Uh, if you do pull for her, do it because you love the unit. Don't invest that much viz just to get the TMR. I do find it interesting to compare her stats to more, and then um, the, the Dress Up Glaciella. Uh, Dress Up Glaciella is a unit I'm not sure we'll get in global, because she was the fan-voted unit on the JP side, uh, but she is a mace-wielding fire mage, so really similar in her kit to what Ketone has. To be honest, I do believe Glaciella is a better unit than Ketone. Uh, she does have a cost 100, so that's not too surprising, uh, but I do want to put it out there. If we do get her and you have Ketone, you might be a little bit disappointed. Otherwise, Ketone has pretty much the same stats as more, exact same agility, <laughs> almost the same HP. Uh, she does have uh, a little bit less magic, which I guess is because she's uh, an older unit, but her resistances are really good. 15 slash is great, 10 magic, uh, guess what are the two most common types in the game, so that's pretty good. And then she's resistant to stop and disable, which are two of the worst status effects as well. So she's got a pretty good kit here, and then as we'll see, she keeps on banking on her slash resist uh, with other things, so uh, she's actually really good versus Slash. In her case, I think she can work fine at 115. Of course, you do get a bunch of extra stats if you go all the way to 120 and a new ability, but there's nothing critical going on between 115 and 120. You only get like 200 extra HP, a little bit more magic as well, nothing critical here. So that's fine, you could invest into her to 115 and then just put her in the barracks to slowly get the 120 and save yourselves the 200 extra mind spheres. Now, as we begin looking at her kit, I want to mention her limit break. I think it's the main reason why she would shine in manual play, and that's because this is a AoE uh, ability with a 67 base percent chance to sleep. If you do lend that on a bunch of enemies, you basically have three turns to work yourself around them, and then when you initiate, your first attack is going to do 50% more damage, because that's what sleep does, and you'll probably be able to just burst the entire enemy team. If you use this to put two of them to sleep, you've basically won the match. Uh, so I think she's a great character for quicken teams, uh, just off of that limit burst. Uh, it's also going to be good mid-fight, uh, but on Odo you'll leverage it a lot less because, you know, your other guys are going to hit the sleeping people right away. You will get a bit of extra damage from it, but they might not even skip a turn, so it's not as impactful for Odo play. Then, look at her passives. It's really hard to tell which ones are the best. I think it really depends which game mode and what's your strategy. If you need mobility, Shikuchi is always there. Uh, for manual play, I would probably run Sharp Mind and Shikuchi. Extra mobility and then Spirit Penetration and Accuracy are always good, because you don't know what you're going to fight. Otherwise, if you can pick your opponents, probably take the extra fire attack up. And then Spirit, just because it's a little bit more bulk, a little bit more damage on all your attacks, it's really good uh, when you can pick the right enemies to leverage those stats. 
No, talking about counter abilities, she has one that is her EX upgrade, so that's really good. Uh, it reduces incoming damage by 30% as often as Aeon Bond procs, so 30% base chance. That's pretty good. Uh, she's not a tanky character, but this will help her take a couple hits before going down, so always good to have a little bit more survivability. Then, if we look at the Kotodama main job, it's overall a really solid one. You get a guaranteed hit, increased mobility, you get a magic barrier, but remember, she will not be that tanky against mages, because she has 97 faith, so she takes increased magic damage in it. Uh, then you'll have the AoE explosion, you'll have the increased magic attack and spirit pen, which I really like, because she can already get 40% spirit pen using sharp mind, so you can get her to 60 with this, potentially 80 with the glasses, so that's very reliable against characters like Rain uh, that rely on their spirit to survive. Uh, but this buff, once you get her to EX job, becomes an instant cast and also increases slash resist. And that's where I think you'll see some niche builds where she's really strong. She can either make like a Kingmont immune to slashing attacks through increased resistances, or a Whisper, or any character with an innately high slash resist. She'll just throw through the roof, and then they'll be almost immune to slash attacks, which is really strong, and it can get her own slash resist pretty high as well. Uh, her 120 EX ability is pretty cool, it's the only instant cast ability in her main job, and then it's in a cross which she doesn't have in her basic abilities, but she has her limit burst in that shape, and also uh, some abilities in her sub job. So you don't need it to hit in an AoE, uh, but being an instant cast and also reducing slash and magic attack for 3 turns is really good. Uh, again, these are the most common damage types, so there will be a couple scenarios where it's useful. Uh, does she need it? I don't think so, I think her kit works well without it, but it's definitely a big plus. Uh, then Kotonama Wilder's sub job, I don't really think you'll ever equip that. Uh, the main advantage would be the instant cast abilities, but she gets some in her other sub jobs, so not really necessary in my opinion. So looking at her sub jobs, Rune Knight has Drain Evocation, which is her longest range move. Everything else she has hits at range 4, while this reaches range 5, so that's a little bit of a plus. And then it sets you up for the following turn, increasing your magic and slash resist pen, so that's not bad. Uh, also Hazard Slash, it is the same attack pattern as her 120 ability, so that's where you get it. Also an instant cast, uh, but it's slash type instead of magic, and hits harder, but doesn't decrease the slash and magic attack. So, you know, there's a trade-off, but you don't need her 120 ability, mainly because this exists. Then she can reduce fire resist, which is cool, but not that necessary considering a lot of players have rain, whose limit burst already reduces fire resist, so if you're trying to run her in a raid or something, you can get the decreased fire resistance elsewhere. Uh, ninja sub job, that's mainly going to be for manual shenanigans, I think, and that's all because of Poison Mist. If you use a Poison Mist quicken strategy, in her first turn she can move 4 with Shikuchi, Poison Mist reach another 4 squares, so she's now 8 squares from her starting location, gets the quicken, moves another 4, and then drops the limit burst at 4 range. So with 16 range within 1 quicken, she can reach basically anywhere on the map, which is really powerful. She can also increase her accuracy with that, which is fine, uh, but she has a guaranteed hit in her main job, so I don't know just how necessary that'll be for her. Uh, maybe to land the limit break if you need it. So with all that said, let's look at a standard build for her, mainly relying on slash resistance and then decent spirit to survive. Uh, so as you can tell, 5000 HP, basically the norm for a damage dealer, 1000 magic, which is the minimum I think to compete. Uh, we've seen Black Witch Helena reach like 1400, so it's definitely not top tier, but it's alright. And then she has a 43 slash resist, can go to 68 if she uses her own buff. If we were to swap Bahamut with Siren, she would do a lot less damage, but her slash resist would begin at 68 and then go to 93 when she uses her own buff. So uh, that would make her almost slash immune. Depending what you fight, you might want the little bit of extra bulk from that. Then partners for her, I would say are characters that rely on slash resistance already to survive. Uh, mainly, these characters that have like good magic resistance, like rain or good spirit, and that fight mages really well, but struggle against physical attackers. If you can increase their slash resistance all the way, either using the Encounter of Heroes card or Solidus, and then using her own buff, you give plus 45 slash resist through those two things, and it makes a character like rain or Freyevia much harder to kill uh, through slashing attacks, so they're a lot more versatile. Also, Black Witch Helena has pretty good in its slash resist, so if you can boost that further, uh, she'll be hard to kill by most meta means. Now, you would likely want to avoid, first of all, um, uh, characters with slash resistance breaks. I mean, if your strategy is to rely on slash resist and somebody reduces that by 38, uh, you're doomed. So don't fight the Dwaynes, the King Mons, if you can avoid it. Um, Gilgamesh, a little bit less of an issue because you have a lot of uh, ice resistance to make up for it, but your allies might not, so keep that in mind. 
Then, try not to fight characters with a much longer range than you. Uh, Katone doesn't have that good of a range, so she's going to be peppered a little bit, and she doesn't take physical punishment quite well. Uh, if you look at the bills, she only has 7 defense, so she's going to die quickly to a Frederica, uh, or to a mage that has a lot of spirit penetration and can use alternate damage types. So somebody like Luel is going to hit you with a strike attack while ignoring like 80% of your spirit, uh, you're going to go down in 1-2 to two hits, so be very careful. We can look at another build very quickly. Uh, she is a really good candidate to completely shut down ice teams. Uh, she's not the only character in that setup though. Rain can do the same, King Mon can do the same, but as we can see on screen, uh, it's fairly easy to get her to 72 ice resist. All I had to do is put her the fire ring on and then have somebody on her team use the Ifrit vision card. So that's what's going to happen. Again, partners and enemies are not going to change that much, uh, except that you can completely shut down ice teams. They just won't be able to hit you. So uh, that's one thing that she can excel at. So what's my rating depending on the game mode? Uh, first, for PvE, farming and whatnot, I don't know how well she'll do. Uh, she's mainly strong against ice units or a short range uh, damage dealer. I don't think she is very necessary. I don't see many scenarios where I would run her instead of Black Witch Helena, for example. We have so many powerful characters right now that she feels unnecessary for those game modes. In Arena, it depends who you fight. Against some enemies, she'll be completely dominant, mainly if you're fighting slash attackers and whatnot. Uh, but again, she's not meta-defined. You can use Black Witch, you can use Dwayne, you can use a lot of other characters that will uh, be stronger, unfortunately, than what she can bring, I think. Uh, guild Battle, same thing. Uh, and then she doesn't really have any way to be uh, self-sustainable or um, not take too much damage from fight 1 to 2. So you need some way to heal her back or make sure she survives. Otherwise, she's probably not going to survive the first battle. Especially with her short range. I think she's a character that'll put herself in danger very early. And her main asset is her Limit Burst, which you ha only have one cast of. So once it's out, you don't really have it for the second battle. Uh, where I really think she'll shine, I talked about it a couple times, is manual PvP because of the uh, Limit Burst drop. If you manage to catch two or three people with that, you've basically won the match. And there aren't that characters right now that have sleep immunity or sleep resistances. I don't think there's a strategy where people uh, rely on a TMR to increase their sleep resist. Or at least, I haven't really seen that, ha that happen yet. So, uh, there we go. That's really where I think she would shine. Auto PvP, well, it's basically the same as Arena at that point, except you don't pick your opponent, so you have to be pretty careful. Uh, she would be a good support for like a Noto Kingmont and Ketone team or something like that, where she increases their own tankiness by quite a bit and then drops a lot of damage from the back. So there are a couple ways to use her, I guess. With all that said, my plan is to skip her. I don't think she's unique in enough ways for me to uh, go for her, especially at a time right now. I don't have that much Viz saved up. I am interested in Summer Lilith. Uh, I am fairly interested in Summer uh, Kilfe if we do get her, but I do think I would skip them. So, you know, too much to spend on, too little time. Uh, she's not that unique, so it's a skip for me. As for you guys, I also recommend you skip it, unless you're a big fan of the character, or you have some plan on how to use her and where in the next couple weeks. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, insults, something I forgot to say that you'd like me to review in those uh, types of reviews in the future, let me know. Uh, I always try to improve upon those, so any feedback is welcome. Uh, so again, thank you, have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next video.